Namaste, angels. This is the weekly love reading for the period of today, Sunday, December 22nd through Saturday to come December 28th. I waited as long as I could. It is, wow. I just looked up at the clock. It's exactly 11, 11 p.m. Um, I promise I did not plan it, but it's a great time to stop and make sure that whatever I'm saying, you could ignore me for now. Make sure that whatever thoughts are flowing through your mind are positive and you are, you know, working on manifesting positivity into your life. Focused on overflow bank accounts, pockets running over, just love surrounding you in every aspect and area of your life, familial, friendships, romantic, you know, everything. All right, you did it? Good. So let's um, start the reading in, in that vein, right, with that kind of feeling. I, um, like I was saying, I waited till tonight, so late to do this, but I wanted to give people a chance, you know, as many people as um, as would or as I could to watch the general reading because I waited to the last minute to record that one yesterday. My children were having a um, Christmas party and so I tried to wait until, you know, as long as I could. I thought they were going to be, you know, gone and the party ended up going until like, I don't know, like 3, th 3, 3 30 this morning. Started at 8 30 p.m. yesterday. So, um, I finally had to work with them in the background. But most of you, you know, anybody who did mention it at all did so um, in a positive light to say that, you know, they, they appreciated hearing the laughter of young people in the background, you know, people having fun and enjoying the holidays. So I thank you for not being bothered by it. And let's get into this one. So um, with the dice, we're beginning with spend money. sex and it's 50 50 spirit says romantic dinner party and try again so something that we tried this is the love reading so in love maybe or maybe the whole relationship we tried it didn't work we're going to try again second time around um or maybe reaching out or having a conversation or forgiveness so many things that we could have tried before and maybe that didn't work to our satisfaction or that of you know our love interest or partner but we can try again and spirit says forget it so if you try it again, it still didn't work out, forget it. If there's something from the past that's bothering you, that's still haunting you, coming back, blocking your way from moving into, uh, forward, whether, you know, alone or with that party or some other party, forget that too. Forget anything that's inhibiting you, restricting you. Just let it all go. Any negative emotions, regret, resentment, guilt, blame, pride, ego, fear, forget it. Forget it all. All right, so on that note, let's get into the reading. This week I'm using my, um, are these called luck? Fortune teller cards. I'm like, luck cards? No, that's not right. Fortune teller cards. And we're beginning with um, the, the Phoenix, which is really special energy, um, particularly for now. Is there still a, there might still be a Scorpio moon today. If not, then we, we've moved into Sagittarius, but I, I didn't look it up, but I think we're still, we still may be in a Scorpio moon because uh, we're supposed to have one for two days. In either case, um, this Phoenix is associated with the energy of Scorpio, right? It's all about um, like life after death, rising from the ashes. The mythology goes that uh, Phoenix were expected or believed to live for 500 years before death and rebirth. So that spoke to their strength and power and, and beauty and to that of life and death itself. Um, the Phoenix, in addition to the sign of Scorpio, is also, you may not know this, connected to Christ and Mary and virginity and so that could be why it's showing up too because this is christmas week you know um 
It symbolizes renewal, resurrection as well, metamorphosis, paradise, so like heaven, um, the sun, it's also connected to, and all, that's why you're seeing all this fire. Anyway, this card um, tells us to be prepared to be renewed after a period of crisis. So just like the general reading suggested that we're coming out of this period or phase of maybe some challenges and difficulty and things are going to get better, we're starting off the love reading the same way. Also, right behind that, for those who have been reborn or are ready for a new start, key, new beginnings, directions and adventures await for those ready to let go of the past. So if you can forget it, this energy is for you. Speaking of sex with that die, um, with my angel therapy card, sacral chakra, you are highly sensitive to chemicals, additives, processed foods, and energies right now. Respect your sensitivities by avoiding harsh items, situations, and relationships. This tells us to remove any and all toxicity from our life, especially after a rebirth. Like who wants to begin again with the same old shit? You ever heard of if you move to a new house and you take your old stuff, like you're bringing that old energy in. Uh, and it's the same thing with the relationships. You bring energy from an old toxic relationship into your new one, you're going to make your new one toxic too. So it's all about a, a genuine fresh start. Also upright, right behind that ear chakras. Notice messages that appear as sounds, music, and words from both external sources and within your mind. These messages are real answers to your prayers. And lastly, base chakra. Choose only positive thoughts to describe your home, career, and finances as your words determine your outcome. This week, um, by the way, looking at this card, I'm reminded of it. Mercury, the planet of communication, the ruler of the signs of Gemini and Virgo, um, moves into Capricorn. Of course, I talk about that in more detail in the general reading. And lastly, for the, um, what I call the hashtag creepy deck, travel, which is a very chariot-like card for me, sort of combination chariot and six of swords. It is about movement, positive movement only. It can be for me about revisiting. Sometimes it looks like the plane is going back, like from where it came, as opposed to moving forward towards somewhere new. And, you know, I can see people, again, having second chances or, you know, second time around trying something again and you know, planning to get it right this time. Also, it can be about actual literal travel. This is holiday time. Today, um, Hanukkah began, actually. People could be going to visit family. That's the next upright card. And this card, there are three people in it, so it does represent for me what I call a party of three, which could not necessarily be a love triangle, but those are included in parties of three. This one has, you know, like a positive, loving sort of three of cups kind of energy to it. So maybe it's about celebration with family or um, romantic partners or interests over the holidays. So I just wanted to point out um, one specific love focus for each element, beginning with fire, because Aries is the first sign. So fire, earth, right? Fire, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, earth, Taurus, um, Virgo, Capricorn, air, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. The water has really been getting like the best cards for probably like a month now. It's very interesting. Uh, we, we share an overall energy of um, temperance, which can be about imbalance in relationships, feeling that we're carrying the whole load. We're giving, you know, 500%. Our partner is giving 50 or, or not even, <laughs> you know what I mean? Something like that. Um, 
The funny thing about temperance in reverse, however, is that we can feel that way and the partner can feel the same way or they can feel like we're not doing anything and they're doing everything. And when it shows up, it just really means that we need to talk if we're interested in salvaging our relationships. And it's funny, I, you know, did not know this, of course, until just now, but picking it up, I see that the 10 of wands upright is right behind it. The 10 of wands was all up and through the general reading. Um, so those of you who have watched it or will watch it, you'll, you know, notice or you will have noticed already that there were um, at least two tens of wands in that reading, as well as the five of swords. So this is about conflict, of course. It could be conflict in our relationships or around our relationships, outside influences, gossip, um, negative talk that we need to clear away from our cipher. Because, you know, it, it, once it, it enters, it bleeds in from other people. The hate spreads. And next thing you know, it's affecting your relationship. So, again, if you want to salvage the relationships, then, um, you know, it's important to protect them from these outside inf negative influences. And so let's start with um, the Three of Wands in reverse for the fire signs. Again... Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. With love, um, this points to recent difficulty in relationships, but the good thing is, like the Ten of Wands, it's, it signifies that that recent difficulty is coming to an end. So if you've been having challenges in actual um, relationships, existing, existing relationships, uh, or you know, contact with your love interest if you're not committed, that all should be coming to an end. If you're looking... Um, to get with somebody, you're single, and maybe you're trying to start a relationship, or you're looking for a relationship, or, per, or you know, a, a person, um, there could be somebody right in front of you. This came up in the general reading also, and this card, in fact, came up in the general reading. And it's like, don't... I think last night I, I, I summed it up by saying, like, it's like that don't judge a book by its cover sort of energy. Um because that person will be right in front of you, but you might not be looking at them because they might not be, you know, your type. And um, it could be really good. Something could really, really good could come out um, between the two of you. If you give it a chance, you have to give people a chance if you're really interested and in, like, like happily surprised. So that's for you, uh, fire signs. Earth. The five of wands in reverse. Nobody likes the five of wands because it tends to point to conflict, right? And for me, the five of wands not only points to conflict, but maybe as opposed to the five of swords that we just saw over there, um, tends to specifically be connected to if it's, if it's not our own inner turmoil and conflict, you know, from within, then it's with close friends and or family. And of course, nobody wants that. And that family can include, you know, our mates, our former mates, or the, like the other parent of our children. And it just gets really sticky and ugly. Um, also work. But again, this is the love reading. So I'm trying to focus um, as specifically on love, although these outside factors can affect our relationships, trying to focus on love as much as possible. And specifically in love, the five of wands in reverse does point to conflict, right? However, it, it might be like the kind of conflict that you need, like conflict that's going to help your relationship. It's going to bring stuff to the surface that you need to talk about. Maybe things that have been swept under the, that you need, you know, swept under the rug, things you need to address, things that have been, um, you know, you've been in the dark about or one or the other has been in the dark about. So if the subject comes up, it's like, oh, like, I didn't know that's how you felt. Or I didn't realize that was going on. If I knew that, then I wouldn't have felt this way. You know, it's like things coming out. And we also saw a lot of that in the general reading. Things coming to light with the, the sun having shown up in the reading also at least twice. Um, so definitely some things are going to be coming out this week. Things that we, you know, maybe had been secrets. Maybe not malicious secrets, like not on purpose, but it's just like stuff that we didn't know. Perhaps some actual malicious secrets with the five of, of swords, people talking about us, like I said, gossips, wisp, um, whispers, but things are, what's done in the dark always comes to light. And a lot of it is coming to light this week. If you are single, looking for love, <sighs> you may have your you know, eyes and or heart 
set on somebody and you may even be, you know, actually dealing with them in some capacity, but it doesn't seem like they're moving. It's like they're stuck. Like you're ready to go. You're ready to take the next step. You're ready to move forward. And they don't seem to be doing anything. <sighs> you need to understand, to know and understand that whatever is holding them back, their hesitation, their reluctance, whatever it is, their issues, period, have a lot more to do with them than with you. And in fact, they may have nothing to do with you. You know, just some stuff that they're dealing with. And so your, um, you're experiencing some of the consequences that it's you know, bringing a wedge between you or distance, maybe you're not seeing them. And, you know, and you're saying, well, what did I do? Why aren't we seeing it? You didn't do anything. You're not seeing them or they're not seeing you because they've got a lot of other crap going on. They're not calling you because they've got a lot of other crap going on. And you can say, well, people make time for what they want. Yeah, that can be true. It can be true. It's not always true. I mean, isn't, isn't it true sometimes that sometimes people, unfortunately, will hurt themselves or try to hurt themselves because people didn't understand that, you know, that they had stuff going on in their lives and everybody expects so much of them. And then you say, you know, um, oh, I wish I had known they felt that way. I wouldn't have put so much pressure. Well, then when people tell you how they feel and they're honest or when they avoid you because they need time to themselves, then you still take it personal. And I'm not just speaking at you guys. I'm, you know, my, myself included, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure I've done it too. Like, you know, it's part of human nature to, um, it's part of human ego. It's part of human ego to, you know, presume that stuff is about us or should be about us or that, that we're the priority in a person's life. We're their main focus or we should be. But sometimes some people are dealing with just some things that are just too heavy um, for them to focus on anybody else, you know, regardless of how much they may want to. And so we just have to allow people to go away if they need to go away and to come back and maybe explain it to us when they're ready or not, you know. So some of us may be dealing with that. But again, for the most part, with the Five of Wands, it is a card that, that shows up um, to, to get past some obstacles, you know, that have been in the way, you know, to, to break down some walls and barriers that have been blocking you. So it's a good thing. Air signs. Page of Wands. Upright. So, um... Pages bring news, right? This one brings, you know, he's no different. Page of Wands is maybe an actual person. Court cards often represent actual people in our lives. A Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Right? Could be coming our way or have recently entered our lives. Um, my fellow air signs. Messages of love. Or that stir up our emotions, our passions. They reveal how passionate another is about us. All of those things could be coming our way. People asking you out on dates or, you know, um, wanting to see you, wanting to visit you, wanting to be with you, wanting to start a commitment, wanting to deepen a commitment. All of those things um, with the page of wands up, right? And he is extremely passionate, right? Um about what you know that which he has his eyes set on and his heart set on if you're single so definitely a new um potential interest with somebody with whom you have a lot in common you know it a genuine spark would be between you with the page of wands upright showing up and and it's a fun person you know they're willing to try stuff they're adventurous for me it's, it's not true in the tarot, um, but, you know, traditionally, but for me, the pages are representative of the, like the mutable signs, you know, this sort of young at heart and forever young kind of energy. So like first and foremost, this would be Sagittarian energy for me. Um, but, you know, of course, Sagittarius, Pisces, Virgo, Gemini, those are the mutable signs. This person may be even, you know, look particularly young if they're older. Um, this really... 
you know, a zest for, for life, a fun, loving life, loving, happy, go lucky kind of person, you know, um, this can also mean <sighs> that if you are in a relationship, again, that's feeling imbalanced, committed relationship already, where, you know, you're not very happy. It's crossing this five of wands. Maybe it's bringing up the five of wands in reverse, bringing some stuff into this up to the surface that you need to address. I'm not very happy. Like if again, if you're interested in saving the relationship, what can we do to save it? What can I do? Right. Each person has to be willing to put in to give that half and half that 50 50 or that 100 100, you know. Talking about the temperance in reverse, that's our overall energy. Both parties have to be willing to put something into it. And if we're not, or our partner's not, it's probably time to, you know, keep it moving. Pack it in and keep it moving. Just giving you both sides of it. So it can be really awesome. <laughs> Or, you know, it could be shedding some light on some stuff for us. Four of Wands. Water signs. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. And this was actually a card that came up for the masculine in the general reading. The Four of Wands. I don't remember in which position, but it was, it was wonderful. I mean, it's awesome anyway. The Four of Wands is an awesome card. If you're already in a committed relationship, you know, this can be... Again, your voice is going to deepen um, real soon this week. Maybe because of the holidays or whatever, you're, you're getting closer. Somebody may get engaged. You know, you open that, those little boxes. There's an engagement ring in it. Um, or meeting the family. Maybe you haven't done that yet, but now you meet his family or you meet her family, all that kind of stuff. If you're single, you could maybe meet, meet somebody at one of these special events. So, you know, at a Hanukkah party, at a Christmas party, at a Kwanzaa party, uh, at a New Year's party, but that's next week. Um, well, I guess you could be having one. They could be having a party in advance, right, this week. Um, at a wedding, some other sort of celebration, a birthday, whatever, something that's going on now. You could, you know, an event, you could meet somebody that's going to be really awesome for you. Um, if you're single. So if you get invited to something, right, if maybe some sort of page offers you an invite to an event, take it. Don't miss out. Somebody, again, that you know already, maybe, somebody that's right under your nose or that's not your usual type that's going to end up under your nose could be, again, who you meet or with whom a, a commitment gets deepened. Um, Somebody, if you have a situation that, again, needs to be brought up to the surface, it could result in a deepening of commitment. So, you know, that's why I mean, like, it's beneficial to your relationship for this thing to come up. And you can find that it ends up, you know, the result is maybe even like, again, engagement or getting married or something can come out of some sort of argument or whatever. Uh, disagreement, debate, because you didn't, you weren't, you weren't talking, communicate with each other. You maybe you didn't know what each other needed, but then when it comes to the surface and you do, you realize you want the same things. You want to preserve the relationship and you want it to deepen. Next thing you know, you're headed down the aisle, right? Um, and say the same thing here, something coming up to the surface and it results in, you know, somebody expressing their, you know, passion for you, their interest in you or vice versa or and or vice versa, maybe in a more balanced way because you hadn't realized that you both felt the same way. So it was feeling imbalanced and causing conflict, maybe internal conflict. I got to leave this person. I got to leave them alone. They're not interested in me. Meanwhile, they're just as head over heels as you are. Definitely some fire and air situations 
um, very, very strong fire and air situations, maybe specifically Sagittarius with major arcana card temperance, our overall energy representing the sign of Sagittarius. But for me also being very much about um, the sign of Aquarius, because I, I find this being on the front of the card to be a water bearer, in my opinion. So that represents the sign of Aquarius. So that could be the fire and air with this with this being the placement for air and this page of wands i'm just i'm getting something like you know good matches and again um deep commitments between fire signs and air signs all right let's go and see what the other cards have to say to us Let's do a spread from the masculine perspective with the angel therapy cards. Just to see like where they feel we, the healing needs to happen between us. So divine feminine. The masculine as it relates to the feminine. Himself. The union or connection as a whole. This too is for singles, couples, people in separation, everything, everybody. Overall, what the masculine would have, the feminine, what kind of energy he would have, the feminine give to the union or connection this week. What he himself is willing to. What the universe would have each or both do and even wants to help us with. But we have to first affirm because we have free will and the outcome. And the overall energy is sacral chakra. So it could involve uh, sexual energy. Maybe sexual inhibitions, frustrations, um, trauma, things that need to be addressed, discussed, that we don't know about each other. Divine Feminine. Indigo. The person you're inquiring about is an indigo, meaning a highly sensitive, natural born leader. The masculine as it relates to the feminine. <laughs> you are a powerful light worker. Yes, an indigo one. <laughs> it's safe for you to be powerful. Your spiritual power brings great blessings in loving service to the divine. I've been feeling for the past probably about a month now that there's um, a major ascension phase for us all but particularly for the masculine and they're really beginning to um, realize and in some cases to re-realize because they had already been awakened and sort of fell back asleep who and what they are and what their purpose is in this world masculine as it relates to himself ascended masters powerful loving and wise spiritual teachers are watching over and guiding you And the masculine it relates to the union or connection as a whole. Have you asked your angels for help with this? Your angels want to help you with this situation. However, they require your permission before they can intervene in your free will choices. And look, in, look at the placement. It's sitting here right underneath um, where I said the universe wants to help us. But we have to first affirm because we have free will. So that's confirmation, reconfirmation. Overall, crown chakra. A lot of chakra healing this week that needs to be done. Pay attention to your ideas as they are messages of true divine guidance sent in answer to your prayers. What the masculine would have the feminine, what energy the masculine would have the feminine give to the union this week or connection this week. It is power animal. Maybe the phoenix. Your animal spirit guide is a guardian to you and is helping you with this situation. Yeah, I think the phoenix, I mean, everybody has their own spirit animal, power animal, but I think the phoenix is our like shared one this week. Again, about renewal and rebirth, resurrection, rising from the ashes. So after, after challenging time, after facing obstacles, here we are again, more powerful than ever before. 
ready for the world, so to speak. What um, the energy the masculine himself is willing to give to the union this week? Archangel Raphael, the healing angel, is with you, supporting your healing work. He's also the um, archangel of the heart chakra, or the angel of the heart chakra. So love. What um, the universe would have each or both give to the union this week and even wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm, like call to the universe to do it because we have free will. Fairies. You have a strong bond with the fairies and your life purpose involves helping mother nature. This is very strong earth energy, maybe because of all the cap. I think like six bodies um, are going to be in the sign of Capricorn by next week or by the end of this week. And lastly, the outcome, singing and dancing. Express yourself and awaken your psychic senses through the magical power of music and movement. So this says a lot. This is about like, again, the clear cognizance, uh, clear audience, messages that we receive through music, through sound, synchronicities, signs, but also I think literal singing and dancing and the people again that we're going to meet at these celebrations and um, parties and gatherings and reunions and things that happen uh, over the holidays and this week in particular. So now I want to do a spread more so from the perspective of the universe. And let's use these. Speaking of the phoenix, the power animal. So here, Divine Feminine, um, the recent past, near future, Masculine's higher self, blocks to individual or shared progress. Again, this is singles, couples, separation, whatever. What the Feminine can do to help herself, what the Masculine can, what the universe would have each or both of us to do to help ourselves and wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm because we have free will and the outcome. Again, the overall energy is Phoenix. Be prepared to be renewed after a period of crisis. And temperance is about that for me too, our other overall energy. So it's about being renewed. It's about recovery, where we had loss, where there had been a void temperance like that healing energy comes in to to fill that and to um replenish us divine feminine moon pay attention to your intuition at this time and move ahead confidently so there is a new moon in capricorn that's one of the bodies that's going to be in capricorn um on the 26th the day after christmas and also an eclipse so very powerful energy and it is about new beginnings and newness. And of course, the moon itself is representative of fem feminine energy. So, you know, it makes sense that this is in the placement of the divine feminine. And um, for me, it goes beyond just feminine energy. And it's like feminine energy of surrender. It's really important to let go and sort of let God or let the universe and to really pay attention to those messages and to that guide that come in and to that guidance that you receive and follow it. Um, I don't really want to say blindly, but at the same time, I kind of do. It's like real genuine faith and trust in yourself and in the universe that you're, that you're on the right path. Recent past. Fire. And look, it looks just like the Phoenix card, right? So this is after a period of crisis. And this is the recent past. So this is the crisis. Let go of emotional upheaval. This is like a tower energy that came. That was the crisis. And embrace the renewal of the present. And then what does it say? Be prepared to be renewed after a period of crisis. So recent past. And then this is our present. Near future. Goals. And how Capricorn is this, right? It's very like Ace of Pentacles. Progress is positive and personal goals will be achieved. 
not may be achieved, they will be achieved if we keep like our eyes on the prize and hold on to that intention with faith. Faith, real belief. You see it crossing the moon here? Real belief, real confidence in yourself and the universe that you're on the right path and you're receiving your messages correctly. Masculine higher self. Flowers, be generous. Success and emotional fulfillment are yours. Uh, especially in consideration of this, this is very like King of Pentacles. So Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Generosity, uh, success. That sort of stability is a feel to it. Can be about literal gifts that are given, exchange, maybe again because of the holidays. Flowers and candy and stuff. Blocks the individual or shared progress. Star. It was hard times, difficulties, challenges that were holding you um, back. Right? Again, that's over. Hard times are over. Look forward to an abundance of happiness, enthusiasm, and positivity. So what's the obstacle now with this here? It's you. That's the only obstacle that there can be. It's where your mindset is. So that's why it's important to, again, focus on the positivity, to expect it, to look forward to it, and get your mind off the negativity. Maybe that's why they had to start the reading at 11.11. I see more, I see more um, like commonality, too. Now it's with these two cards. The star and the moon. This is like a sea, <laughs> the sea in the universe in the sky, and then here of water, these two blue skies full of stars. So it's very water bearer, and the star in the tarot does represent the sign of Aquarius, the water bearer. So that's coming through again. Um, so as the first spread indicated, a fire sign can be very, very significant. Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. Also a Scorpio, ruled by Mars. So, you know, it's still connected to fire. Mars, the red planet. Also the ruler of Aries with this Phoenix energy being connected to Scorpio. Moon, so that's like water sign energy, again, maybe most specifically Scorpio, but also Cancer, which is ruled by the moon, and Pisces, which is represented by the moon in the tarot. Earth signs have definitely come up, I'd say first and foremost Capricorn, but also the others. And these are just signs that could be particularly significant um, during this week. What the feminine can do to help herself, maybe to get unstuck and to focus on positivity instead of, instead of allowing negativity to seep in. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Take care immediately to avoid temptation and deceit. So this is about clearing your space, your cipher of toxicity. Like, you know, the people that you don't need to be around, the places you don't need to be around, the things you don't need to consume. And this is guidance to be careful of that, mindful of that. It could be the Capricorn energy coming in to say it's time to address these things too. The devil in the tarot does represent the sign of Capricorn. So this could be more earth energy showing up. What the, and a Capricorn could be particularly significant. Maybe that's from, uh, from whom you need to move away. Or maybe that's to whom you need to move closer. Step away from somebody else that doesn't mean you well. Capricorn does. Could be the king of, of earth. Represented by these flowers and these goals. What the masculine can do to help himself. <laughs> Propose. Step up your game. <laughs> That's what you can do to help yourself. Step up your game. 
proposal, a romantic or business opportunity is indicated. Take advantage of it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kidding about step up your game, but yeah, but you're, you are guided to take advantage of this opportunity that comes your way. And we're not dealing with business opportunity this week. This is a romantic opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. What the universe would have each or both of us do, but, um, you know, requires our free will. The universe even wants to help us with this, but requires our free will, our affirmation. It is thorns. Weathering the challenges ahead will bring in a new and positive future. So the universe wants to help us to make it through any remaining storm or past any remaining thorns without being too hurt. But we have to allow it to so support us and the outcome. <sighs> Very nice. We started with an overall energy in the other car, the other deck of travel and plane and movement. And we're ending on one of positive movement as well. Plane. A journey is indicated either physically or metaphorically. And your life will become more full. This could definitely be resulting, like, like I was saying, the masculine, for example, taking initiative. Maybe traveling to visit you unexpectedly. Again, he may specifically be an earth sign or just be dealing with that sort of energy. Very king of pentacles. Very generous, very um, stable, wants to provide, take care of you. Um, but the plane also feels, like I said, like the travel card, or which is like the chariot card. And that would be representative of the sign of cancer. And it is about both metaphoric and literal movement and can be about actual travel, and which, which um, would make sense to be increased at this time of um, the holidays. I'm just like, I just like zoned in on this one star. You know, it kind of is like the star of Bethlehem. It's just like this one bright star among so many others. So I also think that, you know, like Christmas is significant here. Let's do advice. So again, with an overall energy of travel, I'm just gonna sit it here atop plane. So now we got two planes, there's a plane in each of these pictures. Um, Further advice to the masculine, young female. Young female is very representative of Sagittarius energy for me. Remember I was saying first and foremost, Sagittarius, it's coming through very strong. This card is representative of Sagittarius energy for me and the planet Jupiter, which is Sagittarius's ruler. Um, Jupiter also connected to fellow um, fixed fire sign, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius and Taurus. So those signs again could be particularly significant too. And Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, uh, luck, karma. So it helps us to, to, it brings us gifts. Jupiter brings us gifts. And I think that that's what this is about too. But there could be a particularly young female, um, legal, of course, we're talking legal, <laughs> that shows up in the life of the masculine. Or maybe a fire sign. She's all red if not a Sagittarius, a fire sign in general. For the feminine, friendship. Well, um, when Venus entered Capricorn, that's one of the bodies that's, that's there, it was all about or is all about friendship. I'm sorry, left Cap Venus left Capricorn and went into Aquarius, and that's all about friendship, and sometimes our friends turning into um, our lovers. Like you're meeting friends in the least expected place. And that could be, again, somebody standing right in front of you. Somebody's in your face and you're not considering them for a partner, but they would be a good partner for you. Masculine, you are profoundly clairvoyant. So not, not only are you an indigo and a light worker, you're profoundly clairvoyant. Trust what you see in your mind's eye as well as with your physical sight for your spiritual vision helps you with healing, teaching and guidance. Feminine. Visualize success. See yourself doing well in this situation and have faith 
in a positive outcome. So this is about manifestation too, making your, um, your thoughts your reality. And patience. Slow down, change your attitude, and clear your mind. This could be about the 50-50 Also, I'm seeing the um, infinity symbol here with this clock. Um, hmm. I'm not really sure what all it's time to tell me, but I'm getting something about the 50-50. And the infinity symbol is significant too. And lastly, for the feminine world, another uh, energy that came up quite a bit in the general reading. Be open to new possibilities in all areas of your life. Something has come full circle. Some phase is complete. Some relationship is ending so that you can move into a new one or a phase that you were going through in your existing relationship is ending so that you can move into a new chapter and just be open to it all in a positive way. And it should be really, really good to you. <laughs> I hope that you guys have enjoyed the love reading. I'll be back with the moon reading. If you want a private reading, energy healing, merchandise, any and everything that I have um, to offer, including friendship, all of the information will be in the description box on how to get in touch with me. Namaste.